commence the uh, festivities. We'll do a 45 minute Pashtimotanasana and then Shavasana. <laughs> No, I, 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 I'm not allowed to make you do anything I haven't done myself. I did, in one of Ramanan's classes that Arsha did, you know, I did do a half an hour with the Vista Kodasana. Mm -hmm. Beautiful dance. Beautiful dance. Beautiful dance. But it was very, it was really nice because Mukesh was playing the harmonium and chanting and... Mm -hmm. You know, we were grooving on the sound and the vibe, and not bad, not bad. It was, gives the mind something to do other than, why am I still in this pose? <laughs> Is he trying what to judge? I, what am I learning here? I think I'm learning a version. How to deal with a version. Mm -hmm. Okay, but enough about me and my... Me and my duka. Trying to create a better feeling blue. Right? right. Trying to create a version of yourself. It's better. Yeah. A, Ooh. Version. <laughs> a version of myself. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> this is William 2.0. <laughs> Definite upgrade. I don't know. I might have to put in my old SIM card, though, and reboot myself. <laughs> oh. There you go. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, guys, sorry, Betsy. Such old, old sexist talk. Okay, people. Oh. <laughs> you shall commence. James just asked to have uh, links in, so. Who? Oh, Dean. Okay, thanks, Paul. James, you mean? Yeah. All right. Sitting comfortably with the spine loosely straight. Rested in the nature of your mind just as it is. Sense gates wide open. Knowing whether you're, whatever you're experiencing, you're knowing it. Whether it's sound, sight, sensation, thought, smell, taste. Spontaneously arising, like clouds forming, dissolving, forming, dissolving in the vast sky-like space of awareness. Poche likes to say, you can't do awareness wrong. <laughs> it's not possible. Awareness is what makes it possible for us to even know anything at all. But it is useful to start with an object. So let's... Be comfortable in our seated posture and gently let the attention experience the breathing taking place. So you don't have to focus on the breath or grasp it. In fact, you're opening up to receive the breath in the entire body, wherever it moves, however it moves.
No need to manipulate or fabricate any kind of special breath. As the Zen masters like to say, you're just sitting, just breathing.
Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhavatu, Saha Viryu Karvavahai, Tejasvina Bhaditamas, Mahi Vishavahai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Chitasya Pradeno Bacha Malam Shavirasya Chabai Jakina Yopa Karutam Pravaram Munina Patanjalin Pranjalir Anatosmi Abahu Pusha Karam Shanka Chakrasida Rinam Sahasra Shirasam Chwedam Pranamami Patanjalin Hari Hiyo All right, so, oh, James, uh, condolences for England's loss yesterday. Do you care about English football? You don't care. So you don't care that England lost. Oh, well, I care. I have, I have a friend who is a Brit, so he, you invited me over. It was very sad. <laughs> okay, moving on. William, I've got a question. What? So, um, okay. uh, you say, we, you often say sense gates wide open and just allowing whatever yeah. rises to rise. So then I had a flash of pratya, like the sort of like the, Maybe it's the definition of pratyahara that I'm sure it's broad too, um, or, may, or many different levels of it, but where it says withdrawing from the sense gates. So, yeah, with pratyahara is more of a form of uh, concentration practice where you are usually what you it's a very step by step process. Okay. Are uh, you like you'll spend, you know, if you're on a retreat, you'll spend a week just watching your breath. Mm -hmm. You'll spend a week just focusing on hearing. Okay. Coming and investigating vipassana, the three fundamental qualities of all phenomena, phenomena, impermanence, <laughs> no self, mm -hmm. and dukkha. That's what vipassana actually means. It's an analytical investigation of what you're experiencing. And those are more concentration practices. And you, and you do that through each and, with each and every sense gate to become intimate with the truth of no self, dukkha, and impermanence of all of those things, including thought. Because mm -hmm. the mind is the sixth sense gate, really. The lower mind, manas, small m, which is very different from this... Tibetan nature of mind, open awareness practice. Okay. And, but all of those, all of those practices, the vipassana practices, the you know systematically step by step doing concentration practices on each sense gate, are really, 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 Rinpoche says, actually essential. Mm -hmm. Because if you just try to do nature of mind practice, you're going to do nothing but get lost. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and even if you're doing open awareness practice, then you have the tools. You can say, oh, I'm getting too spaced out. I'm not really there. I'm going to go to breath awareness, or I'm going to go to body scanning, sensation awareness, or I'm going to open my eyes and go to seeing awareness, just to ground yourself. And then you can let go of that. And then the sense gates are wide open, and you're just clouds in the sky. I get right? it. I get it. Yeah. Long answer to a short, long answer to a short question. I get it. But having said that, it's very, very unique in the modern era that these open awareness nature of mind practices are even being taught to beginners. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Why? Because Rinpoche and his Rinpoche's father also said that the Western mind is so conceptual and analytical that a lot of you have been watching your breath for 30 years and not really getting anywhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. So he said, okay, drop all that. Rest in open awareness. And then, I mean, then, then they go back and forth between those kinds of practices. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. we like to we like to analyze the shit out of everything, right? <laughs> which, <laughs> yeah. Which is just you know more all mind stuff, mind, 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 yada yeah. yada yada, blah blah blah. It's real all yeah. the time. I can so see. So just drop all that. Yeah. I can see how a, like a beginner or an um, experienced meditator would would just uh, being open to um, wide open to whatever arises could be very disconcerting and be like, well, I'm supposed to be not thinking about anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, you know, as you know, the teachings are incredibly repetitive. Mm-hmm. I mean, even Iyengar yoga classes are incredibly repetitive, right? Mm -hmm. You know, thought is like clouds arising in the sky of the mind, all right? Mind cloud. Thoughts are like waves, but the waves are not separate from the water, you know, over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. But they like to get beginners now in the modern era to just realize, oh, there is a thing called awareness that is natural, spontaneous, and effortless. I am using that in order to do these other like focus focus techniques. All right, this will be on your exam, Mark. So I, I, uh, I have a question. All right. But another thing, though, I have to say, James, do you know the show Peaky Blinders? No. Okay, because you you kind of got a Peaky Blinders haircut. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's that? Oh. Peaky Blinders is a show about uh, gangsters in the right after World War I in Birmingham, England, and they all have these, you know, shaved sides, top, and they're all suffering from massive PTSD. <laughs> Sounds World right, War yeah. I. Okay, right up your alley. Okay. What's, no question. We'll do what's, some yoga questions today. <laughs> what's the alternative to the analytical mind? So if there's this idea that the Western mind is like full of analysis, what's the alternative? I, that sounds, I mean, that's very ignorant, of course, but. Not at all. That's because you're, you have an analytical question. No, <laughs> mm-hmm. no but the, that's the thing is, we don't turn it into a dichotomy. Mm-hmm. So I'm, the, the teachings are not saying the analytical mind is bad. No, you have to have a very refined analytical mind to do concentration practices. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with that. But you, they, they kind of point you, okay, step back from that. You know, prior to any sort of analysis of what's arising, awareness is already present. And in the beginning, when you look for it, and that the teaching that's repeated over and over again is when you look for it, you can find it. And that's it. And not finding is finding. It's that's that emptiness quality. But the knowing quality is clarity. They always say it's emptiness and clarity are the same thing. So I'll I'll give you some repetitive instructions about forward bend, stuff you've all heard before. I've told the story. Some of you know who Mary Dunn was? Ever heard of Mary Dunn? I know you have, Betsy. Mm -hmm. 
Mary Dunn's mother is the woman who brought Iyengar to America in 1950, 60, 84, 84. But so she was a very well respected senior Iyengar teacher. Uh, died young, unfortunately, probably 15 years ago now. But she said that, and this, I don't know if I've told you this story, Mark, but as a beginning teacher, you'll like this. Uh, she went and taught her first yoga class, okay? You, you, you know who Mary Dunn is, Mark? Mary Dunn? Okay, you have to look up Mary Dunn. D-U-N-N. -N. Um, she went and taught her first yoga class, and she came home, and she said to her husband, I don't know what I'm going to teach next week. I taught them everything I know. <laughs> and her husband said, well, maybe, her husband said, maybe they didn't learn it. <laughs> I've, I've taught you guys, you people, everything I know, but we're still learning it, right? <laughs> it's a joke. All right. He had a good point, though. Because, you know, you can hear an instruction you heard five years ago, and because you've kept practicing, you hear it again, and your body goes, oh, that's it. Ah. So you go beyond the conceptual level of understanding the pose. All right. Downward and talk. I have a few concepts for you now, people. And I want you to just do regular downward dog for a minute or two, OK? Just okay. do it. Tap into your physiological memory and intuition. How you what because when you practice at home, right, you just you start you you probably know if you notice, you actually start with sensation. Before you even start conceptually telling your body to do down dog, all of you have long enough practice that you start actually non-conceptually, you start with sensation. You're feeling out the pose. Now then, some conceptual teaching may arise that you apply. I'll just let you be quiet for another minute, and then I'll add some concepts. Mm -hmm. And bend the knees, come down, take a rest. Actually, go to Uttanasana now. Go to concave spine, Uttanasana. Bend the knees slightly. Allow the knees to go turn out a little bit, and then rotate the thighs in to bring the knees to point straight ahead again. So again, receptive on that sensory level before, and then you notice the conceptual teachings may come into play. But even then, if you apply the conceptual teaching, you are receiving it through the sensation of the body, through the non-conceptual knowing. All right, come down. So we're going to take dog pose again, but have two blocks and adjust the distance so that the block is going to be under the forearm. So it's going to be a little guide to tell you not to push the forearm down or toward the block. Send the underside of the arm up and down. And move the head out of the armpit chest. Okay, so put the block under the forearm. So there's contact sensation, but no pressure. And it's just a feedback guide to tell you to draw the bone up toward the socket rather than pressing it into the block itself. 
Be careful with the neck and throat. Okay, bend the knees, come down, take a little break. Let the arms rest. I'm going to Adho Mukha Svanasana one more time with that memory of the forearms slightly lifted. And also transfer the, the heel of the palm, the root of the fingers. From where you extend the fingers without pressing toward the floor. So from the wrist to the elbow, you're slightly ascending the bone even as you lengthen. Then from the elbow to the armpit socket, again, slightly ascend the flesh toward the bone as you lengthen that bone. Lengthen out of the arms. Always adapting and noticing if you have a dominant side to bring balance to the non-dominant. Okay, come down, rest. Let's rest the arms. Go back to Uttanasana. Rock back on your heels and lift your toes. Spread the toes. Remember last week was Floyd week? So extending from the center arch out through the ball mound and the toe to set them back down. Untuck the pelvis. Lift the inner thigh up and lift behind the pubic plate as if you're lifting the pelvis off the head of the femur. Walk your hands back as you receive the pose. Tailbone releases to the perineum, front spine lengthens, inhale, breath come up. Take a few breaths in Tadasana. Okay, take head balance, Shirasana.
you ground the forearms, then draw the bicep, the inner upper arm, upward from the inner elbow to the socket. So you're not pushing down from the socket to the elbow. You're drawing the bicep up into the socket. And contract the back muscles to draw the skin of the back toward the back ribs. It doesn't come from pushing the skin toward the ribs. Contract the deep inner back muscles between the flesh and the back ribs while widening them. Shoulder blades should feel wider. Collar bones are also wide. Upper arm is drawing up. So there's weight on the head, but you're not pushing the head into the floor. Go on making the side body longer and longer, the hips, the chest, through the pelvis. Making the legs compact as if from the hip to the ankle, they were refusing to become one leg as the bones go up. And you do your Floyd, extending the center arch through the ball mount. And recycle your awareness to the base of the pose, rebuild the pose. When you get up to the feet, hopefully you're still in contact with the foundation of the pose, the base. Okay, Baddha Konasana legs, but keep the up bicep muscle moving upward from the inner elbow to the socket. Back muscles continue to engage. Upavista Konasan variation. I think most of this class does that. Inner thighs to the sockets. More internal rotation, James. Internal rotation from the socket. Eventually, the big toes point to the floor. There you go. That's the pose. All right, extend the legs back up. Groin to heel, heel through center arch, ball mount. And then the breath takes you down out of the pose. And rest. Then take Supta Virasana. I should have given that instruction a long time ago. The big toes point to the floor in Upavista Konasana and Shirasana.
Take the waist long from the top of the buttock. Extend the arms as if they're beginning from your floating ribs. And draw the waist and side chest away from the pelvic rim. The abdomen and diaphragm will naturally be drawn up a little. Just don't pull it back toward the spine. And then gradually come out of the pose. Okay, so look at your screen. I'll show you the setup here. I'm going to open out a mat here. The wall. Tricky little bugger. Let's see if I can get a little more. A few here. Okay. So I take dog pose with my heels to the wall. Step toward the midline and I bring my right leg up. Big toe points down, knee faces down. I lift my left heel, take it as close to the floor as I can, but keep it in contact with the wall and my knee if I need to. We extend the leg and walk into your capacity. Don't push toward the wall, extend up. Standing in your thigh lifts. Okay, you have seen, now do it. William, um, don't push what towards the wall. Extend what up. Did you see it, Betsy? No? Yeah, hold on. I saw. Um, can you hear me? I can re, re show it. Can you hear me? I had a question. Oops, where'd I go? You know this one, Betsy. Right leg up the wall, left heel to the floor as possible. Draw up from the inner thigh and point the toes of the right foot up. Walk in, walk up, roll the right hip toward the wall. Sort of like an Adho Mukha Hanumanasana. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, so you said um, don't push something towards the wall, lift something up. Don't push your chest toward the wall, lift out of the left groin. Got it. You come closer to the wall by walking the hands in and put, moving the right foot higher up on the wall. But don't push toward the wall, go up. Okay, now the rest of the class has been in it a while, so walk <laughs> out and come down. <laughs> Rest your arms a bit. And then do the second leg. Bring the left leg up. 
that left tip toward the wall again. Point the toe up. Slide the big toe mound, big toe up higher on the wall. Now lift, draw strongly up from the inner right thigh and lift that groin. Roll the left hip toward the wall a bit. That's it. Okay, walk out to come down. All right, sit in Dandasana. Adjust the camera again. Right. Left leg back, right leg forward from Janu Shirasasana. Now, if you can reach beyond your right foot, put a block out there like I'm doing. I have a block to go to kind of cave spine. If not, just hold the foot or loop a strap. Lift up. Press the big toe mound into the block and pull against it. Spread the toe wide though. Floint on the block. Was it last week floint week? Remember? Did you floint on by yourself the rest of the week at all? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I floint every day. I also, I should floss every day, but I floint. Lift up from behind the pubic bone. Roll the thigh in, draw it toward the socket. Gradually bend the elbows to the side, extend forward. Keep pressing the ball mound into the block or the finger grip. Grip. What if you can't have the block, just press it into the finger grip. Make the side torso longer, especially the right side. Shift the ribs left to right over the right thigh. Forearm extending. As if the heart center, we're going to move toward your soul. And inhale, breath come up. Left leg forward, right leg back. I'm not going to stop and give 6,000 instructions about how to bring your right leg back. No, still John and Shasasan, Jane. There you go. Concave spine to start. Right groin releases back, right pelvic rim rolls a little forward. Gradually begin to extend. Elbows go wide, don't drop them down. Keep the elbows level with your armpits. But keep the upper chest wide open. And your sense gains, Betsy. <laughs> Press into the finger grip or the big or the block. Make the waist side bodies longer, focusing a little more on the left side to shift the rib cage right to left over the thigh. Let go any gripping behind the navel. Release back from the pubic plate. And inhale, breath come up. Go back to Dandasana. <clears throat> we are about the Padma. If you can't hold your foot by swinging the hand around, you can loop a belt around your heel.
Again, I'm pressing my right foot against the block. Bring that left knee toward the midline and extend out over the left. Keep the right elbow level with the armpit. Soften the right quadricep a bit and draw the bone toward the socket. Right side body longer, longer, longer. Extending out to your capacity. Good. And come back, brief concave spine. And release. Okay, second side. The wrap around right hand to right toe or put a belt around the ankle. That's how I work on this side. Lift up and out of the groin and extend forward. So I have the belt around my heel and ankle here. Extend that inner heel a little more, everybody. Inner heel, extend. Press the outer edge of the foot down against your thigh. I know it hurts, but it hurts good. <laughs> and extending out. Keep the left elbow level with the armpit socket. Open the collarbones. As you go forward, don't round your shoulders. Bring the right knee a little toward the midline by bringing the inner thigh toward the socket. Come back to concave spine. And release. And back to Dandasana. Uh, left leg Virasana, Triangle Gagabada, TMP for short. I have to put a little height under my right hip or I'll just tilt over. And I reset onto my inner right thigh sit bone. In, inhale. <laughs> Exhale. Like Pratap and Joyce in imitation. <laughs> Inhale. Exhale. You ever watch it online, Teach? How are we talking? Okay. Inhale. And exhale. <laughs> exhale. Extend forward. Elbows stay out. Although when I do this pose, I tilt so much that I use my right hand to help roll that right thigh in over to my left shin, extend out, then I can usually hold the position. Soft belly, emphasis on side torso long. And inhale, breath come up. Okay, and we'll take Krojasa and Heron pose. 
saw a great blue heron in the Minnehaha Creek this weekend. It was so beautiful. Lift the heart center up over the sole of your foot. Roll a little forward on the sit bones. Lift the leg up to draw it closer to you. Don't try to pull the torso toward the leg. Okay, bring the leg into half lotus. And then take Varajrajasana 2. If you can reach around and hold the foot, do that. Otherwise, as in Ardhabhada Padma Pashtimo, I loop the belt around the ankle. If the right knee does not go all the way to the floor, you can support it. That's good, Mark. Yeah. Left palm goes under the knee, bring the knee toward the midline. Turn the head forward, keep the right collarbone wide open. And release. All right, Triangu Kaikapada to the second side. stay up. So the elbows draw the side bodies out from the waist, pelvic rim to floating rib, floating rib through armpit, chest, collarbones open. Open the front body so the spine has space to flow into. Don't try to push from the spine toward the chest or the chest toward the leg. back briefly through concave spine. And release. Okay, then hair and pose from Chasan on the left side. Gil Scott Heron, actually. The revolution will not be televised. So wait there. Rolling up a little forward on the sit bones, lift the leg, lift behind the heart center. Open the collarbones. Find that little back bend below the neck. And release into Bharadvajasana 2 on the second side. Inner thighs to the sockets. Now my torso says, okay, where's Tadasana? 
probably out there with Waldo somewhere. And they had horror. See how I bring my legs in? I, I literally squeeze them in and suck my adductors toward the sockets. Otherwise, they kind of splay out like that. Okay, release. But wait, there's more. Upavista Konasa. Very good flointing, I got to say. You kept up your flointing nicely. You can flaunt your flointing. How's that? Hey, where does the king keep his armies? In his sleeves. Thank you. All right. Extend for <laughs> Ooh, okay. Wait. Pose and repose. A little different dynamic here. Keep the torso a little low to the ground and Turn and go Parshva Rupa Vista to the right side. Roll that thigh in. Elbows level with the armpit sockets. Right side waist spine leading the way. Twist left to right. Ribs literally shift left to right. And inhale, breath, come back up. Sit in the center, wait right there. Forward bend again. Holding the feet or arms in front, whichever you'd like to do. Doing, receiving, doing, receiving. Keeping the torso lower, turn over your left leg. Elbows level up in line with the sockets. Side body long, but the left side a little more dynamic, shifting the rib cage right to left. But rolling the left hip thigh in. And inhale, breath come up. I like to support my legs as I bend them. Sitting by the Konasan.
Now, what I would do, Betsy, is walk behind you and stand on your thighs, right? Remember those days? Yeah. I don't know if that's allowed anymore. <laughs> Short shins, long thighs, right? Heels pressing, toes splaying. It's not that you're pushing the thigh bone out of the socket, but the skin moves from the buttock toward the knee on the outer leg, and from the inner leg, the skin goes toward the socket. But different ways of describing it. So you've given the legs their instructions conceptually. Allow the legs to receive and manifest the instructions on that sensory level, non-conceptual. If you stay in your head with the instructions, you get too caught up. You don't really connect with the physiological body. The subtle body, the sukshma sharira, the nerves, the breath, the life force, the pranamaya kosha, all these wonderful fancy names. Different ways of describing flows of consciousness and prana and life force in the body. All right, release. Now we're going to take uh, Supta Baddha Konasana, but not with a bolster. All right. So it's the usual uh, strap setup, right? Around the ankle and the hip. Have, when you have room so that when you lie back, you can extend your arms over your head. I cinch up my legs and scooch a little forward. And then I extend my arms. I like to be able to press into the wall. My ankles push into the belt. Make sure the belt is well below the pelvic rim, right just outside the pelvic rim and uh, well below the pelvic room towards the mid sacrum. Catch the skin of the trapezius down and then push into the belt tuck. Initially you start with the tuck. And gradually release the tuck slightly and then you deep in the back groin. That is from the pelvic room to the sit bone. Pubic plate itself has a sense of descending and releasing toward the perineum. You're not trying to press the knees to the floor. It's the same dynamic of the skin from the top of the thigh moving toward the knee, the skin from the inner thigh moving toward the socket. You're not supporting the legs because it's not that long a hold. Here, go another half a minute or so. And look for symmetry in a rhythmic breath.
and then gradually come out. Okay, then set up your Sarvangasana Halasana. Shoulders stand. Inkapada Sarvangasana.
at your own pace, about 30 seconds on each side. You take the legs wide, Supta Kodasana, or at least the width of your chair. Okay, right leg to left leg, Parshvahalasana. Walk a little bit more to the left if you can, a tiny bit. Raise the hips to raise the thighs. Ah. Okay, open the legs back up to Sutta Konas. And then Left to right. A little farther to the right, tippy toe. Raise the hips to raise the thighs. Okay, back to a wide open stance, Sutta Kodasana. Rejoin the legs, take the arms over the head, palms up. Release, roll out of the pose. Take your time. Slide the shoulders to the floor. Roll little mini Satubanda position. Wait there.
and then take Shavasana. Simply knowing the body, breath, nerves, just as they are. No need to create some sort of artificial shavasana. Just be with the settling of the prana body, the subtle body, and the mental body. happens on its own. You don't have to do it. It's not a technique. Simply remaining aware of the process of the natural settling from the dynamic practice. Don't worry if the mind wanders away occasionally, you will naturally and spontaneously wake up and simply recognize and rest in awareness again. Resting in pranamaya kosha, sheath of the energy body.
observing and perceiving the spontaneous arising of flow and sensation. So we reify into a solid form of the body. Dedicating and sharing the mirror with all beings. All beings have happiness and its causes. May they be free from suffering and its causes. May they never be departed from the causes of happiness. May all beings draw in great equanimity, free from attachment and aversion. Om. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Yama Hari Om Namaste. Thank you. Ah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Ali. You're welcome, James. How's Nicole doing? She's doing okay. Um, she had a um, retiring day today, so um, that's why she's not here tonight. Um, but she'll be back next week, I think. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you heard that well, she, I hope her in... You heard she has a broken toe. Go ahead. Well, is that what it is, a broken toe? Yeah, it got confirmed, so she... Um, uh, by imaging, essentially like MRI, so um, so she's non weight bearing at the moment, uh, but she's still attending classes, um, just you know doing modifications that don't um, bear weight. Okay, well, may her healing continue. <laughs> Should be back next week. All right, everybody. See you in the future. Thank you, William. You Welcome, on. Mark. See you, Betty G. Shri Shri. That's easy. <laughs>
and my whole 